This is a, a very special symposia for us. Uh, it was suggested by uh, Dr. Cindy Flowers, who's one of our speakers and will be chairing some sessions. And this is all related to the potlatches that will also occur on uh, the 25th and the, uh, the 26th. Um, you know, here in this very beautiful city, you know, with all the beautiful nature and, and uh, opulence, um, we, uh, the people who organized the uh, meeting really wanted to hear about what was going on in countries that don't have uh, as many resources. But it turns out, as you all know, that even within uh, very wealthy countries, there are disadvantaged populations. And so what we're trying to do is just to really scratch the surface uh, and to look at um, how lupus is cared for in uh, a lot of different regional areas, and also to see if we can use technology in this meeting to bring those individuals together, both physically and virtually, uh, in years to come to see if we can basically narrow the gap between what we can do in terms of caring for individuals with lupus, as well as the study of lupus. Uh, and we're grateful that, that Cindy called our attention to the fact that at the American College of Rheumatology meeting, most of the presentations are completely irrelevant to her uh, practice in the Barbados, where she's the only um, uh, rheumatologist. So um, as we were organizing the meeting and getting speakers, we also uh, were aware of other events in the world. And um, oh, I'm sorry, before I forget, th this uh, symposia required the support of the National Institutes of Health the Institute of Musculoskeletal Health and the Canadian Institute of Health Research, which is their NIH, the Canadian Arthritis Network, and then uh, Human Genome Sciences, Inc. So uh, in a way of introduction, um, health outcome is really more influenced by the social and economic environment than biomedical advances alone. And this is a, a very famous graph, which I've stolen from <laughs> uh, Google Images, uh, which Tom McCune first published in his uh, now really famous book in the, in the 70s about the role of medicine. And he plots the annual death rate per million from tuberculosis over time, beginning in the corner 1838, I think it is, to 1970. And you can see that the mean annual death rate from TB is going down. And then superimposed on that are various events in medical history. First, when the tuberculous, tubercle bacillus was identified, and then the next point where the first chemotherapy, successful chemotherapy was started, and then ultimately BCG vaccination. If you were there at the moment, you would have thought that all these things might have been effective. But in reality, it was going down uh, in the meanwhile, or parapassu. And people have argued this relationship subsequently. But I think that uh, one very strong interpretation is that other things are important. It could be herd immunity. It could be the social environment. So uh, Ed Cass, who was a teacher of mine at Harvard, um, said that you know we've known for many, many years that poverty is bad for your health and for health outcomes. And this observation seems to be repeatedly made uh, with very little in the way of what we can do about it. Uh, and recently, uh, an article that came from uh, Chris Murray's group uh, with collaborators at uh, Harvard School of Public Health uh, depicted uh, the expenditures for health during two time periods. And I'm, I'm sure you can't see this well, but basically this is uh, one of two slides. And the first depicts a period of time between 1999 to 2002, and then 2003 to 2006. And it plots, using uh, a color code, about the percentage uh, aid, uh, foreign aid for health expenditures as a part of that country's gross national product during that period of time. And uh, I know you can't see it, but uh, 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 you see that in the uh, many countries in the sub-Sahara sub Africa, which is mostly in the, the red, uh, show decreased commitment. And then whereas other parts of Latin America, the Middle East, and Asia showed increased uh, government commitment to health, while the, um, 
the, the contribution from foreign aid was less. So that, and this is the counterpart to that. And the point, I guess, of these two things, which you can't see well, is that uh, as foreign aid goes into a country that's uh, really in need, logically, I would think, uh, the administrators and the government switch the money from health to other areas. So it's, it's a zero-sum game, and their priorities are not always health. And even the act of charity from other uh, uh, sources uh, makes it worse in terms of health because it substitutes rather than adds to helping them with the problems. So in lupus, um, this is uh, data put together by Katya Dewart and Luis Inez and Maura Kuto from the University of Coimbra in the, uh, the latest chapter in epidemiology uh, of lupus in Lajita's textbook. But uh, there are some studies uh, worldwide, and uh, these are not completely comparable, but they give you an, ex an idea of the five-year survival rates in America, Japan, where it's very high over five years, compared to South Africa, which is a little bit lower, and in Carousel, uh, where it's uh, much lower. And I think this uh, is an example of uh, health disparities in lupus worldwide. And uh, another study by Bernatsky uh, and others uh, looking at data from Canada, US, UK, Sweden, Iceland, South Korea, you see even within so-called advanced uh, prosperous countries, there's a gradient uh, in terms of the standard mortality ratio. And it, there's always winners and losers whenever you do this comparison. But in America, uh, we've known for quite a while that the uh, black-white uh, death experience from lupus uh, is wide with the African-American population doing worse, and the gap is growing. So uh, that's why in this um, symposia, we're really looking uh, to hear about these experiences because you hear in biology, you know, experiments of nature. Well, we also have experiments of need where we can learn things uh, from uh, cultures that are taking care of lupus but with much less in the way of, uh, of resources. So 2153, January 12, uh, there was this major earthquake in uh, Port-au-Prince, Haiti. You can see the uh, actual shake map that you can pull off of Google. And thereafter, I think the world was just uh, shocked and, and sad by the events. And we saw their government buildings you know, crushed and all their infrastructure in an already impoverished country go down. Uh, these kinds of pictures in the press. And um, I was struck by one of our physicians from the Brigham who went to Haiti uh, and uh, commented that despite all this uh, human disaster in one of the world's poorest countries, uh, that the human spirit seemed to be strong and that there was quite a bit of resourcefulness. And she pointed out that this uh, iconic um, uh, statue of a slave calling others uh, to uh, re uh, revolution uh, against France uh, through the conch shell was still standing. 